Welcome to the Home Inspector Marketing Podcast. Because you're a home inspector looking to increase your sales, improve your cash flow, and boost your bottom line, you are in the right place. For additional training resources on how you can grow your home inspection business, go to microreturns.com right now. And now, here's the podcast. Hi, this is Mike Crow, and I run a home inspection business. In fact, I've run a couple of home inspection businesses. The true joy for me, though, has been helping literally thousands of home inspectors build really solid home inspection businesses as well. We can help a single man operation be able to do over $300,000 a year, maybe all the way up to $400,000 a year as a single inspector operation. Even better for me is the 80 plus companies that we have helped be able to build million dollar home inspection businesses. I would like to help you be able to do the same thing. When you focus like a laser, you will outmarket, you will outsell, you will outmanage your competition at every turn because you are staying ahead of them. Your competition, most of them, will have one, maybe two sales approaches. You're gonna have 10 different sales approaches. One of the master salesmen that I studied one time said that people on average have seven reasons they don't use you. And you need to have 15 reasons why they should use you. You've gotta have more approaches. You will have answers and you'll have perfect follow-up letters. Do you have something that goes out after you, after you book an inspection that makes sure that they stick? Do you have something that goes out after you talk to them, but for some reason they don't book? Our top people do, and they're all there for you to be able to put into place. You're gonna have a team that understands all of this and more, and then you, your business can literally operate without you. Michelle, can you stand up for just a second? I just wanna make sure everybody sees you again. When you first started with us, okay, you know, you basically had to answer the phone. And then Michelle, one of the things she said was, nobody can answer the phone better than me. And then eventually we talked her into letting some other people answer the phone. And then eventually we talked to uh, uh, Rob into doing less inspections personally because he's not an inspector, he's a business owner. All right, and, and you guys take more vacations now and you just do all kinds of cool things, right? So you gotta focus on the right thing. You gotta focus with your people. You need to take one concept and focus on it. The most important thing I ask you to put on your calendar besides date night is focus time. Two hours every week. Do you know how many people will actually do that? 5%. In this room, 25%. Do you have on your schedule right now two hours to focus on something when you get back to build your business? I'm not asking. I'm trying to just make a point. If you don't, you want it there. And it needs to be there every single week. Two hours to build a stackable, to build a system, to change something, okay? Jonathan does this, by the way, with his inspector meetings. One of the things that Jonathan has just done an incredible job on is making sure that all of his inspectors, every two weeks, come into the office for two hours worth of training. Starts at 6 a.m. in the morning. One guy drives an hour and a half to get to the meeting. And he never complains after leaving. He goes, man, I'm just so glad I show up here. I, I always learn something, it's amazing. By the way, we record those meetings. So you can either use it for your inspector meetings or if you're a single man operation, it's like attending Jonathan's meeting. Hank's shanking his head up, yes and you bet. It's a cool thing, isn't it? All right, Jonathan does a wolf pack huddle and a wolf wrap up every single day, every single day. He calls our marketing people, what are you gonna get done today? At the end of the day, what did you get done today? Okay? You have to focus on time on your schedule and now you need to help other people focus as well. You have to help other people in your business that you're growing focus as well. Do you have a meeting with your inspectors every two weeks? I know it sounds simple, but most of you don't do it, okay? You succeed with implementation. That's the real key to success. You're gonna learn this week how to make that happen. We're gonna show you how you get stuff implemented, okay? You wanna play bigger, the biggest secret of success? The biggest secret to success is to help other people. It's so, so simple. And then thrive by helping and giving your experience to others. So the question is what level are you gonna play at? 
This is the 95%. See the crowd down there? I'm going to tell you another secret. I've been playing with this. Wow, I like these shoes. All right. I've been playing with this some, and I want to show you a secret. I've updated this. As my brain continues to improve on information, I found out something very interesting. And you've, some of you have seen me do this already. There's the 1%. By the way, the 1% are not always rich. Sometimes they're rich in how they help people or how many, their legacy they left behind. Mother Teresa was not rich, okay? Gandhi was not rich. Now I want you to know something. They controlled riches by the time they were done, which is interesting. Then you've got the 4% here, and then you've got the 95% here. This is what I call the cliff. This is where the 95% will push you to. And as you're falling off, they will say, oh, I'm so sorry. Splat. <laughs> Man, that's a shame. You had a flat tire, so you ran late. You ordered something, but it didn't come in because you didn't order it soon enough. We have backups on top of backups here at the show. And I will tell you that uh, uh, moving into the building this year was a little rough because of, uh, it threw us behind. And yet, somehow miraculously, we got it all done. All right? 95%. You need to know when you go home, and you heard Dan say it, when you go home, your seat on the plane might be taken by somebody else. Now, Dan gave his up, but I have lost my seat sometime to other people. I was on one flight, and I was half asleep, and they came and got me and pulled me off the plane and told me I couldn't go on the plane. Now, I didn't fight and get my teeth knocked out in the process. <laughs> I got up and got off the plane. And then I told them, that's okay. Tomorrow I speak to 300 people. I'll be glad to tell them how you handled this. <laughs> I was on the first flight out in the morning, okay? And I got there in time. But 95% of people that you're surrounded with will tell you it's okay to fail. They will hug you. They will cry with you. They will, they will shake your hand. They will tell you it's okay to fail. And I want you to know something. They're right. It's okay to fail. It's not okay to stay there. That's what they don't get. What do you mean you're getting back up and trying again? What, you, you failed at that already once. You failed at that already twice. You failed at that already three or four times. How many times are you going to have to do this before you realize this is just a bad idea? <coughs> Successful people fail more than the 95%. I fail usually at something every single day. And the next day I'm thinking, how can I do that differently so that I get a different result? I don't want to do it the same, right? Very simple. Launch in the deeper. 95% see the obstacles, the 4% see the objective, the 1% see how to help others achieve it, which is why I wanted you to see our coaches. We hope you enjoyed the podcast. And as a friendly reminder, if you're looking to increase your sales, improve your cash flow, and boost your bottom line as a home inspector, go to microreturns.com right now.